Joining us now, Education Secretary Miguel Cardona. Mr. Secretary, welcome to Fox News Sunday. Thank you, Trace. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you as well, sir. In an effort to continue the school year with in-person learning, the CDC recently announced that students exposed to the virus can safely continue in-person learning so long as they are regularly tested for the virus. But now, according to Burbio, that's a, for, a firm that tracks these school closures, the closures are really ticking back up. Already more than 2,100 schools plan to be closed in the coming week. Mr. Secretary, where are we heading exactly? You know, we've been very clear. Our expectation is for schools to be open full time for students for in-person learning. We remember the impact of school closures on students last year and our science is better. Uh, we have better tools. We have $10 billion in the American Rescue Plan for surveillance testing. Uh, vaccinations are available now for children ages five and up. We recognize that there may be some bumps in the road, especially this upcoming week when superintendents who are working really hard across the country are getting calls saying that some of their schools may have five to 10% of their staff not available. So uh, any decisions on very short term or emergency closures are most likely based off of uh, staffing issues and ultimately those are safety issues when you don't have adequate staff. But the goal is full time in person learning for our students, they've suffered enough. Yeah, you mentioned bumps in the road. You know, those schools that plan to remain open, sir, including larger school districts like in New York City, Los Angeles, and D.C., have announced strategies centered very much on testing to stay ahead of the spread and keep in-person learning. But, Mr. Secretary, how practical, in your estimation, is the testing-centered approach when there is a nationwide testing shortage, federal distribution really still up in the air, and new research now showing that it's questioning the reliability of detecting Omicron by the widely used rapid test. So how do you square that, sir? Right. You know, we know testing is a part of a uh, overall strategy that should be used to keep our schools open. Vaccination efforts are also a big part of that strategy, and we've seen them work. Uh, I would say that as schools come in, they should be thinking about a testing strategy to make sure that if students are having symptoms, they can be tested in school. Keeping them in school is critical for them, for our communities, for our families, for our parents. So it's really important that the testing protocols mm -hmm. are put in place, but they're not done in isolation. Increasing vaccination helps. Adherence to the mitigation strategies that we know work uh, are also part of the strategy. Yeah, what about the school's ability to carry out these prescriptions, this strategy you talk about? You know, we've already seen what an enormous strain the pandemic has put on the system in terms of staffing shortages. The president of the American Federation of Teachers, Randy Weingarten, said the following, and I'm quoting here, sir, I am concerned that lots of districts don't have the infrastructure for testing and test to stay. It's going to be really, really bumpy and there's going to, to need a lot of grace. And I think the question is that frustrations are high and grace among a lot of parents across the country is in short supply, sir. You know, there's a level of urgency that we shouldn't uh, lose around making sure that our children learn in person. Uh, the impact of hybrid learning, the impact of remote learning is very real for, for us parents who have had to experience it at home as well. Um, so we need to do everything in our power, which includes getting access to those uh, uh, tests. Let me remind you, the American Rescue Plan, when it came mm -hmm. out in March, had funding for testing. And thanks to groups like the Rockefeller Foundation, contracts were set up early for schools to have uh, surveillance testing regularly done in their schools. We see more and more of that happening. And our efforts at the Department of Education are to support districts and states to get contracts set up so that these systems are robust so that our students can stay in the classrooms. Are you saying the road is not going to be as bumpy as Randy Weingarten says it is? I'll tell you, I've been doing this since March 2020. And uh, it's really important that we continue to work together. I do think there will be bumps in the road, especially tomorrow. I mean, superintendents today are receiving calls of mm -hmm. staff members that they were expecting to be in the classroom tomorrow who have come down with COVID. So we're going to roll up our sleeves, all hands on deck. Let's keep our children in the classroom. Uh, that should be our default thinking. And as problems mm -hmm. come up, we need to work together to solve them.
Mr. Secretary, I want to run some numbers by you here. December saw an increase of 50% in new pediatric COVID cases. That's according to the American Academy of Pediatrics. And went on to say only 23% of 5 to 11-year-olds have received one dose of vaccine. Are you confident that the schools, even after their best efforts to remain open for in-person learning, have a plan B just in case of things like you said, staffing shortages or parents deciding to keep more and more of their students home? We learned that educators were able to turn on a dime uh, when the pandemic first came and we went to remote learning across the country and uh, it wasn't ideal but we know that we're able to adapt. Uh, the goal, however, remains to stay focused on in-person learning, not only for our students' academic needs, but for their social emotional needs. Uh, many parents don't have the luxury of staying home. So we have to do everything mm -hmm. possible to keep them in school as our plan A, plan B, and plan C. Obviously, if, if uh, short-term emergency closures are necessary, schools should have the tools because they have the resources to provide an education that way. But that should be the exception, not the rule. Yeah, you talk about plan B. One school district has already had to modify plans to require vaccination of students 12 and over. We're talking about the Los Angeles Unified School District pulled back its mandate at the last minute when the California Governor Newsom and community activists questioned a, a perhaps unintended consequence, meaning that more than 30,000 unvaccinated students would be moved back into distance learning. The district defended the turnabout as necessary because they did not have a plan B to stand up remote learning infrastructure at the last minute. What do, you, what do you think about that, sir? You know, I've always said vaccination decisions need to be made at the local level and at the state level. But we know over the last year and a half in those places where vaccination numbers are high, there's less disruption. There are less students in the hospital. So we need to continue pushing efforts to provide access to vaccines for our children. Vaccination clinics across the country are happening. Uh, we need to protect our students. At the end of the day, we want all of our students back in the classroom, but we want to do it safely. Yeah, we talked about the grace among parents. The Brookings Institution, which has surveyed parents four times during the pandemic, found that parental concerns about their children's well-being had begun to ease during the summer, continued to ease in October when 93% of students were in person school. Brookings wrote the following, quoting here, this evidence suggests that the relative normalcy of in-person learning this year may be driving reduced parental concerns. And of course, sir, as you know, closures in school curriculum became hot button topics in the November election for Virginia governor. Former Education Secretary Bill Bennett said this in an interview with Fox this week. Watch. The American people are saying we're not taking this anymore. We don't believe you. Yeah, Mr. Secretary, how do you respond to that? You know, in my travels across the country over these last eight, nine months, I've talked to parents and they want their children in school, they want their children safe, and they want to be heard. Parents have put up with a lot over the last year and a half trying to uh, balance work and uh, educating their children. So this partnership with parents needs to continue. I want to see it elevated uh, as we move forward past the pandemic. Um, and it's really important that we work together to make sure children are in the classroom and that they're safe. Yeah, and parents have been juggling. Uh, Secretary Cardona, thank you for coming on, sir. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Take care. Thank you.